Hi, good afternoon. We're here with Phil Brown from Absolute Commercial Interiors in Harrogate. How are you doing, Phil? I'm very good. Nice and sunny, crisp morning. So yeah, enjoying it. Monday morning, let's get going in. That's it. Yeah, nice autumnal morning. Um, so let's kick us off. If you could tell us a little bit about who you are, what it is that you do, and how long you've been doing it for, please, Phil. Uh, so I'm Phil Brown. I'm the uh, founder of uh, Absolute Commercial Interiors. We design and create inspirational business interiors, mainly offices, um, but into the hospitality, hospitality sector. And we've been going for some 16 years now. Awesome. That's a good long time in business. So what makes you stand out from other people in your sector? What would be a unique selling point or points? We are uh, passionate about our design capability and also our delivery capability with a, I head up a team of extremely uh, capable professionals, which just allow me to, uh, to be able to sell our services to many myriad of businesses in our sector, in, sorry, in the, in the world of, uh, of office, I suppose, office occupation, really, even though we don't call it an office anymore, it's a workplace. Sure. And so do you operate, is it UK wide? Do you? Yeah, just, just UK wide at the moment. Not, uh, we have European suppliers, but not actually done work in, in Europe as yet. Okay, great. Um, and in those 16 years that you've been going, what's the business journey been like to date throughout? Obviously, we've had quite a few topsy-turvy uh, moments the last few years, and there's, you know, you'll be covering the 2000, sort of 2008, 2009 crash. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your journey? Well, yeah, the um, what doesn't kill you cure, uh, makes you stronger, doesn't it? But yeah, there are, in any business, there are a myriad of ups and downs. Sometimes you don't know when the ups are there, but um, the downs certainly hit you with a, uh, with a, a vengeance. Notably, uh, COVID, obviously, which was um, a bit like having a cigarette machine company when the band was smoking. Yeah. But COVID has allowed us to uh, pivot our business model and offer advice to business owners as to what to do with their space. Most companies are tied into a lease, so therefore they can't just dispose of space. They have to make it suitable to the new working methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's been interesting, but I firmly believe we're out the other side. Businesses are now taking up very large spaces. We're just working with a, a client in Leeds that's taken 32,000 square feet right. of offices in Leeds. So the messages coming out from the major players in the market are that people will be asked to return to a workplace um, just in different guys is really so we we're, we're here ready and able to work uh, to react to anything that people need great stuff so um you kind of touched upon the future there so what does it look like for you i mean in, it's an interesting uh, aspect that you reveal there about people or, or employees employers wanting employees to come back to the office is that a general trend you're thinking that's going to uh, it, it is a trend that's uh, that's gathering pace. I think if you uh, look at any press, Amazon, people, the larger players are now starting to ask them to come back three days a week. A lot of our clients are now asking us to design spaces for, I mean, total flexibility is, is the key to it. But I run a business. Um, we don't have a working from home practice because I, me and my team can't design interiors via teams. It has to be collaborative. We have designers, we have project managers, we have estimators and salespeople. You cannot collaborate to create fantastic environments over teams. So that's my business, but a lot of our clients have specific needs in different sectors. So we are very, very lucky and I tell our designers this all the time, and that we can create environments that stimulate people to come to a workplace. And as my uh, my fellow director, Helen, said, because I said, oh, it's, it's great. You do a really hard day's work and you go home to your, uh, to your house, which is your sanctuary. 
And she quite rightly said, well, no, for some people, coming to a workplace is their sanctuary because they may not have the fantastic home life that you've got, Phil. So, and it really struck a chord in that, yes, we are, when people walk through a door into an office, the atmosphere that hits them should be one that's that's comforting, professional, invigorating, and that their colleagues have got their back. So yeah. that's that's the atmosphere we try to purvey in here. Definitely that environment has a massive impact on people's productivity and yeah, general feeling about sort of going to work and producing results while at, while at work. Um, so I definitely hear what you, you're saying there. So what are the challenges that you've got, do you see, that you can forecast going ahead in the in the business? And what's the sort of future plans for, for growth? There's absolutely no, um, there's no challenges that can't be overcome. We're not, yeah. we're not seeing a place where all workplaces are shut down. Mm-hmm. My old boss used to say, you just make every every challenge an opportunity. There's entrepreneurs like me just don't accept the negativity. You just you just don't. Yeah. Um yes, there has been challenges on getting labor and material. They've eased out again, as they always will. Everything's cyclical. Mm-hmm. The biggest problem in any industry is training people to do the jobs that we need them to do. And in construction, we have a very dire history of training people to become skilled operatives, whether it be a joiner, plumber, plasterer. We have, as a a country, we are rubbish at it. So my passion is to make sure that young people have an opportunity not to just go to university because Everybody thinks they shouldn't gain a 50, 60, 70,000 pound debt. No, I'm a, sorry. I'm a joiner. I'm an apprentice trained joiner. So I'm passionate about being able to work with your hands. And once you can work with your hands, you can do that worldwide. Awesome. So That's we awesome. just channel those energies. And we, whether it's an apprentice in, in accountancy or solicitors, or don't have to go to university. If it's for you, crack on. If it's not, we have to, as a country, allow pe- people options to go to a different method of, of learning. Good stuff. Thank you. A good share on that. So in terms of you touched upon about um, being entrepreneurial and the challenges are there to be overcome and having that positive attitude, what would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned in the 16 years that you've been running your business? If there's one lesson you can pick out. Um, work hard, really, really hard. Um, it's not popular these days, but put the hours <laughs> in, put the effort in, and you will be rewarded. Simple as that. We've got a culture now where it's not the case, unfortunately, and people want things before they can run. Before they've earned them, we have a... Uh, society of of people that think they're entitled to things rather than earning it so we've got a young lad in here 24 years old he is me 35 years ago he will go far he's got the right attitude and it's almost uh yes sorry uh, what was the question biggest learning it's the the, hard work pays off end off yeah, linked to the attitude, which I like. I've got a couple of young kids, and the biggest thing I think I can teach them is the attitude, oh. is how you perceive things is how your life's going to be. So how do you want your life to be? Have the yeah. right attitude. And how your kids perceive you. Do you get up every morning and go to work, or do you create something, or do you do something with your life? And whatever you think about your kids, they're, they're watching you all the time. Please yeah. do not rely on schools. Do not educate your kids. Be, look, I've got teenagers. They the think I'm a dinosaur, but <laughs> my son has got his now own successful business. His work ethic is second to none. So I just hope that people in here, I've still got probably more enthusiasm for business life than anybody 
I know, really, but I'm coming to the autumn of my career. So if I can stimulate guys in here to have a chance to, to carry on the absolute mantra, mm -hmm. we're not, we don't have a unique product or a service to sell. We don't. Like many fit out businesses, there are, and there are many of us, we've just got to show our professionalism to a client when they're thinking about, well, what do I do with my business space? People and property are massive expenses for a business. And if you don't get either of those right, you just, it, it's, it's fatal for a business. So if you can combine the two, and there's no return on your investment that's easily measurable for a new, a new workspace fit out. But I guarantee if you engage your colleagues during that fit out process, there is no excuse for them not to be inspired by it once it's delivered. Right. So uh, there's another question now about inspiration. Um, you mentioned your colleagues being inspired. What are you inspired by, Phil? To, why, why do you do what you do? I'm inspired by people and life. Yeah. I, a good old friend of mine said, just talk to people. Talk to them. And it embarrasses my kids no end. If I'm on holiday... <laughs> I, I don't go, hi, my name's Phil, look what I've got. I just, what, what do you do? Yeah. I met a gentleman at a business dinner on thir last Thursday, and he was the COO of York Minster. Well, and so. I was in absolutely, okay, wow. COO of York Minster, what do you, what do you turn over? Well, 10 million pounds. Wow, that's 30,000 quid a day. What? Well, oh. And they're they're doing they're they're creating this worldwide world leading stone masonry CNC yard where all the mullions at York Minster are going to be cut by a machine and finished by hand. But I'm inspired. Around that table last Thursday, there were twelve businesses, massive conglomerates, down to people like me that run an eight and a half nine million pound business to the nursery owner next door to me. Wife and wife and husband, four nurseries, fascinated by people. And it's I think the mantra that I give out is always be curious. Yeah. Never accept what somebody says to you. And certainly never accept what Google tells you. <laughs> so it, it's and once once it that's fine. But I always say, but why? See it Simon Sinek, the why? Yes. Best book I've ever read. Read, sorry. But you yeah, ask people what's sure. their why. Why do you come to work? Well, I come to work to earn money. No, that's a byproduct of what you do. Why yeah. do you choose to come and work for Absolute? Brilliant. Why does a client come to ask us for our advice? Well, I found you on Google. Well, that's let's move on from that. It's not an answer I want, but obviously we have a Google search engine, so you found us there. But after this conversation, why would I'm hopeful that you'll have a reason why you should retain absolute? So yeah. it's people, passion. I love, I love it. A great reflection. Thank you for that. Love those. Um, so lastly, then, in terms of any latest news about what you're you're up to, or even if it's a case of sharing your website to direct us to where we can go to find out more about you, please use that opportunity now to to do so. Well, if you, uh, we've got two sides of our business. We've got the commercial interiors uh, fit out business, and we, which is easily found on uh, www.absoluteci.co.uk. We've also recently set up um, Absolute Furniture Consult, which is where architects and designers consult can consult with us to specify products to fill a space that they've they've designed. So. We do fit out the furniture, but we're trying to separate them out to give two professional angles to uh, to people, to to customers that, and it it it's trying to get people to recognise our company's skills. If you want a building being built, you would go to an architect who is a professional. If you want yeah. accountancy advice, you go to an accountant who is. We are the same professional model. And it really gets my goat when people don't respect interior design and space planning. 
I've got people out there that spent longer at college than I ever have, and they are skillful. And we've just got to blow our own trumpet that that we are to be a valued member of the client's team. Yeah, profession. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. Absolute pleasure talking with you, and thank you for sharing all that you have. And I wish Thanks you all the best for the future of the business. Appreciate the opportunity, Mike. Thank you.